So in this next module, we're going to talk about the writing step. So this is the step where you're writing the first draft of your piece. And again, as I said, this tends to be the hardest step for most people. This is where you pop open the blank Word document and you got to start writing. Or hopefully you're popping up some kind of roadmap so you have something to start with. So uh, some tips for the first draft. So my biggest tip for the first draft is don't be a perfectionist. A lot of scientists are perfectionists and they want to get it right on the first try. But writing is not the place to be a perfectionist, especially writing the first draft. The goal of the first draft, when I write a first draft, this is my goal, is to get down my ideas in complete sentences in order. And that's it. So they don't have to sound good. They, they have to be complete sentences. That's, my, that's the bar I set for myself. So that's the goal of the first draft, really, is just to get your ideas down in an organized and logical flash fashion in complete sentences so that you're actually composing some prose uh, in that kind of nice order, in that organized order. And you want to really focus on the ideas, the high-level ideas, the big picture, the take-home message, the logical organization. You want to focus on those in the first draft so that eventually your piece is well organized and has clear take-home messages because that's a lot more important than those sentence level details. The sentence level details, you can fix that on revision. So kind of all these things we've been talking about in the last couple of lectures, getting rid of unnecessary clutter, using better verbs, you can fix all of that on revision now that you have the right tools to do that. So on the first draft, make sure you're getting everything down in a logical, organized way, uh, and that's the main goal. Uh, because it's easier to fix the sentence level details during revision than it is to fix things like logical organization. If your logical organization is off, you end up having to revise the whole piece, and that revision process is so much, so much harder. Sentence level editing, that's fairly easy in comparison. And again, the other reason, the other argument for writing the first draft quickly is it's the hardest step for most people. So minimize the pain by writing your first draft quickly and efficiently. And as I mentioned in an earlier module, you know, spend only about 10%, a small fraction of your time, your whole time for writing the manuscript, on that writing the first draft step. I can whip out a first draft fairly quickly because, one, I'm ready to write, I've got my pre-writing step done, and two, I'm not editing myself as I go along. I know that the editing and the elegance in the writing can happen on revision. So that's my tip for you for writing the first draft. And some of you may not write like that, but I want you to try it because it really, really, really makes your life easier and really makes your writing much more efficient and it also comes out better. So um, I thought it'd be fun uh, to share with you uh, some examples of first draft writing that I pulled out of my own work. So um, I went through uh, my files and found some first drafts that I had done. And I picked out some uh, paragraphs just to share with you, just to kind of show you what's, what comes out on a first draft. So this was a short paragraph, but here's a short paragraph that I'd written on a first draft. It said, errors in publication occur when the authors have typos, omissions, or such poor writing in the methods that others cannot figure out what they did or reproduce their tables and figures. Notice that kind of long, complex sentence. Sometimes there's just too much to write up that errors will occur in almost every case. Okay. Notice that's not the most elegant sentence you ever read. Neither of those is, is particularly elegant. Like I told you, don't use there is. I've got my there is right in that second sentence. Sometimes there is, right? It's not terribly elegant, but I got down the crux of what I was trying to say. This is what this paragraph's going to be about. This is the details that I want to get across. These are the examples, typos, omissions, for writing that I want to mention. So, um, so that was my first draft, okay? So you can see it's not great. I just get my ideas down, let them flow. Notice that I, I held myself to complete sentences. So let me show you the revised version. So I went back and revised this, um, and here's what I came up with in the revision. Published papers frequently have typos, omissions, and otherwise poor documentation of methods. These errors make it impossible to figure out exactly what was done or to reproduce the results. So you can see that that very much resembles the first draft, except it's much more clear and concise. It's much more to the point. I dropped out a whole idea about that there's just too much to write up because actually I had somebody who I had a quote from who was saying that exact thing in another paragraph, so I didn't need the repetition. So here's another example, again, from my own writing. I'm going to share with you, you know, what my first drafts look like. So um, 
here it is. Um, this was kind of a long paragraph. Uh, this was from a story that was talking about archaic genes uh, being found in people. And uh, this paragraph was giving some potential speculative implications of having archaic DNA um, in your genetic makeup. So notice again, it's just it's very first drafty. So the finding of these HLA alleles may have some practical implications as well. Now we all divide up into those who carry archaic DNA and those who don't. A potential implication is, notice my use of a boring verb there, is that people who carry archaic HLAs could be more prone to autoimmunity. Autoimmunity is associated with HLA factors. There could be downsides to archaic HLAs. This is very boring writing. Since we've evolved separately from Neanderthals, notice my typo there, for a few hundred thousand years, we may have evolved important differences in the proteins that interact with HLA, the archaic HLAs may interact more poorly with some of these proteins, potentially causing mistakes like autoimmunity. And then I've got a quote at the end. This is all just speculation, but we have been apart for all this time, so it would be very surprising if there weren't differences. Parham says it would solve the long-standing puzzle. So notice I've got a lot of, I've got in that paragraph all the things I want to get out, all the ideas that I want to make in this paragraph. But some of the writing is not very good. It's a there is, autoimmunity is this, there could be, it's very boring, and it's unnecessarily wordy, it's got typos, but I just got it all down in complete sentences. Now here's my revised version, and this may have gone through me looking back at it once or even twice. So Neanderthal or, or Denisovan, that's the archaic part, proteins continue to live on and function inside us, and this may also have a downside part of notes. Neanderthals evolved separately from us for a few hundred thousand years, so their proteins may be somewhat mismatched to our immune system and could play a role in autoimmune disease. Autoimmunity is purely, poorly understood, but known to be related to HLA types, and then we get the quote. So notice that that second paragraph, it's got all the same ideas, but it's much more succinct and clear and elegant than the first paragraph. But it didn't start that way. It evolved into that through revision. That's me editing my own work. All right, so one more example from my own work. So this was a paragraph um, from the lead of a story, and it didn't read too bad on the first draft, but I'll show you what happens on revision. So it says, it's also difficult to study the biology because the brain is so inaccessible. Notice the it is that I've started with. I've told you not to use it is or there is. Cancer scientists can take out a tumor and look directly at the cells, but autism researchers cannot directly study brain cells except on aut autopsy, let alone developing brain cells. Stanford is on the cutting edge of solving this problem. In fact, Dolmetsch's solution is so innovative, it seems straight out of a science fiction novel. I got that little cute thing about the science fiction novel in the end. It's got some nice pieces to it, but it's not great, right? I've got really boring verbs. It's a little wordy. Okay, so then I went back and I, uh, that was my first draft, and I went back and revised it. It's also difficult to access the brain. Notice I still didn't get rid of the it is. It's also difficult to access the brain. Scientists can slice cancer cells out of a tumor and directly study them, but they can't just scoop cells out of the brain, let alone the developing brain. Stanford is on the cutting edge of solving this problem. In fact, Dometsch's solution seems straight out of a science fiction novel. So notice that I got some great verbs in there, slice and scoop, and I cut some extra words. So now it's much more succinct and uh, it's even a little better. Okay, now I'm going to show you one more version because that's not the last version of this, because that's the version that I sent to my editor. My editor revised it even a little bit more. So here's the revised version that actually got printed. Another impediment, access to the brain. Notice the use of the colon there. Scientists can slice cancer cells out of a tumor and study them directly, but they can't just scoop cells out of the brain. Stanford is on the forefront of solving this problem. In fact, Dolmetsch's solution seems straight out of a science fiction novel. So you can see that's even more clear and even more elegant. This went through multiple rounds of revision to get that way. It didn't start that way. So it's okay on a first draft to have, you know, to violate some of these rules I've been talking about with good writing. You can fix all of that later. As long as your ideas are clearly laid out and you know what you want to go in each paragraph, that sentence level editing, that can happen after you've written the first draft. That can happen during revision. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University please visit us at med.stanford.edu.